Hey guys, I hope everyone is doing well. Today for review, we've got a gun that I'm super pumped about. A Canadian spec sub 500 feet per second, 22 cal, Rexamex Throne Gen 2. I know I say I'm pumped about most guns, and I am. I absolutely love air guns, but I have to double down on this one. I've been looking at these ever since they were first released, and fortunately for me, my good friends over at Canada Shooting Supply not only brought some into the country, but they were kind enough to send me one. So, first disclaimer, I have a long-running relationship producing content for Canada Shooting Supply. I was provided this gun in exchange for work, but that will in no way taint my opinion or criticisms. I always try my best to be transparent and honest with you guys, and if you ever have any questions about my relationships or opinions, feel free to ask me. That being said, I was a customer of Canada Shooting Supply for a long time before this current relationship developed, and if it ever dissolves, I will continue to be a customer for a long time after. They offer a wide array of cool guns and accessories with fantastic customer service. I highly recommend checking them out if you are not already familiar with them. Moving on to the gun, the Throne Gen 2 is of a design that has become more and more common over the past few years due to the success of the FX Impact which this gun and many like it owe their existence to. Not only through its design and function, but through the creation of this entire segment of the airgun market. The gun looks technical and futuristic compared to traditionally stocked rifles, and in fact even when compared to modern sporting rifles. Its looks are likely polarizing. You either like it, or you don't. And I do. In fact, I love this particular style of bullpup rifle. That being said, I'd also be one of the first guys lined up for a draft to fight aliens on a distant planet, so take my opinion on aesthetics with a grain of salt. I can certainly see why a person would choose a more traditional rifle over this. The majority of this build is aluminum, but there are several polymer pieces, namely the pistol grip and buttstock. The polymer feels high quality, and the gun overall feels really well made. Its tolerances are tight and I couldn't find any burrs or rough edges. One interesting point to note is that despite its compact size, the gun is a hefty one, weighing in at 7.7 .7 pounds unscoped, and just over 10 pounds with a larger optic on it, which isn't the heaviest gun I've ever weighed, but it seems heavier in hand due to its compact nature. Just something to keep in mind if you're thinking about using one of these out in the field. The butt pad is adjustable both up and down, though I don't show the up adjustments here, and the pistol grip is comfortable with a bit of grippy texture to it. Overall the gun feels nice to hold and shoulder. The only issue I have with the shape of the gun is the cheek weld. This might just be an issue specifically for me personally, but after prolonged shooting sessions, as I was approaching the 50 shot mark, things got a tad not uncomfortable exactly, but I became pretty aware that my cheek was digging into a really unnatural shape. It was worse with the single shot tray than with the magazine as the mag pokes out to the right hand side of the gun and the single shot tray sticks out to the left hand side. Speaking of the single shot tray and mags, if you are familiar with any other Rexamex or Corral guns, you will be immediately familiar with these parts as they are the same, which I'm not mad about. Yes, the single shot tray is kind of finicky, but I do enjoy a little continuity if it lessens my learning curve. In 22 cal, the mag holds 12 rounds. As for the left and right sides of the gun, the overall build and layout is ambidextrous, and you even have the ability to swap the side lever from right to left if you have the need to, which is a pretty nice option for lefties. As for rails, there's a section of Picatinny on the bottom near the air tank for bipods or anything else that you want to stick down there, and the top rail has that dovetail Picatinny combo rail that we are used to seeing on Crawl and Rexamex guns. I like the idea a lot as more mounting options are always better, however be aware that the Picatinny portion doesn't fit all of the Picatinny accessories that I've tried. I'm not sure if it's actually a Picatinny rail or a Weaver rail, and I was unable to find a solid answer to this online. I'm leading towards Weaver though. That being said, I've been going straight for dovetail rings lately when scoping any Crawl or Rexmex guns. Okay, let's get down to the details. This gun has a 
425 cubic centimeter air tank that is pumped up to 250 bar via a male foster fitting. With this particular version of the gun being regulated down to 100 bar, with an 18 cubic centimeter pre-chamber, this gives you about 150 shots at 480 feet per second, which I got using 14.66 grain field target trophy pellets. That gives you about 7.5 foot-pounds of energy. I haven't attempted to adjust the power on this gun or tune it in any way. I like to review guns as they ship and in the configuration that most people will shoot them. That being said, the hammer spring and transfer port adjustment knobs are both available to use on this gun. However, the regulator adjustment wheel has been removed, and that is something to be aware of for those of you who like to tune their guns. I don't think that the removal of the wheel will stop those of you with tools, skills, and knowledge from adjusting your regulator, but the wheel is missing, so I figured it's worth mentioning. Moving down to the trigger area, we come to the safety, which at first I was skeptical of. Well, I do prefer normal safeties, this trigger guard safety found on the gun has grown on me. And though I still occasionally forget to use it, it's a simple mechanism that is easy to use and in a convenient location. As for the trigger, I have a very limited experience with bullpup triggers. I've put around 500 rounds through this gun and 10 rounds through an IWI X95. And that's it. And maybe it's my limited experience that leads me to the opinion that I don't actually dislike the feeling here. It's crisp and not overly heavy, and while the trigger is adjustable, I probably won't change anything about it. Just above the trigger is the side lever. It's nice and smooth and has a good action to it. I like it. The gun can be decocked, just like most other guns, by being careful to hold the side lever back securely, pulling the trigger back, and then slowly bringing the side lever forward. The barrel is 22.8 inches long, with a shroud that is shorter than that found on the standard international version of the gun. This is due to the integral sound suppression being removed. The end is threaded for anything you'd like to affix, which in Canada means air strippers. <laughs> I don't mind the shortening of the shroud, I think the gun looks absolutely fantastic stubbier like this, and sub 500 feet per second guns usually aren't that loud anyways. With this particular gun averaging about 77 decibels at the muzzle, which isn't too bad. All that said and done, let's get into some shooting. I have the throne topped with a 6 to 24 by 50 Axion scope and I'll be shooting at 20 meters. I'll be shooting 5 shot groups out of a single shot tray and the target footage will be sped up 10 times to save time. Before I get started, I would like to point out that it's been really stormy here lately, with a lot of wind. So while I've tried to get this shooting done on a relatively nice day, I still had to contend with wind gusts. That's just the nature of springtime shooting here in British Columbia. I find shooting in fluctuating wind to be extremely frustrating. My shooting here isn't exactly bad, but on calmer days I have definitely shot better groups with this rifle. It is what it is while shooting. Some days conditions are perfect and some days they aren't. For our first group, we have 14.66 grain field target trophy pellets from Agent N. And it's one of those really confusing groups where three of the shots group together and the other two are also together. These pellets have potential I think and I'm going to explore them further in a future video with this gun. Our second group is with the 15.89 Barracuda 15 pellets. These were going pretty good for this group 
until the fifth shot where the wind got the best of me. Our third group is shot with 15.89 grain JSB exact. This group is okay, however, I'm not quite sure why it migrated downward with each shot. For our fourth group, we have 18.13 grain Barracuda 18 pellets. This is another frustrating group, and this will be another pellet that gets tested again on a less windy day. We are shooting 21.14 grain Barracuda match for our fifth group. I don't know what to say. My groups today have a very similar pattern to them, almost like they are made up of two smaller groups each. It's interesting, uh, if not completely frustrating. After these groups, I decided to try the JSB Exact and Barracuda 15 again to see how a second group of each could be improved upon despite the continuing wind gusts. So for group number 6, we have JSB Exact again. While this group isn't perfect, it's an obvious improvement over the first JSB group. For our seventh group, we have Barracuda 15 again. This is a much better group than the first one and is clearly our best group of the day with the first three shots going through the same hole. Uh, it's not perfect, but I'll take it.
So, what do I think of the 500 feet per second 22 cal Reximex Throne Gen 2? I absolutely love it. Not only does it feel exceptionally well made, but it looks fantastic. It has enough adjustments and features to keep even seasoned shooters interested for a long time. And it's a capable shooter. It gives you more shots per fill than any of us have the right to ask for. And all of that comes in one super compact package that measures less than 30 inches in length. What more can you ask for? Do me a favor and go check out Canada Shooting Supply. I'll put their contact info down in the description box. They're absolutely worth checking out if you're a Canadian air gun fanatic like myself. And be sure to like this video or subscribe to the channel if that's the sort of thing you're into. Don't forget to comment if you have anything to say. Thanks for watching and have a great day.